Okay, right. So what we're going to look at now is we're actually going to look at how we make the magnesium oxide. Okay, and this is also on the slide. It's actually on page four. Okay, but I'm just going to do out page uh, this slide here onto um, a page just to make it a little bit more uh, easy to understand. So firstly, uh, what we have is we have a raw material and the first raw material that we have is limestone and limestone, as we know, is calcium carbonate CaCO3. And the first thing that we have to do is we have to heat this. OK, so my first raw material is limestone. We heat it. And when we heat it, my calcium carbonate splits into CaO, which is calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. OK. And that happens in what's called a lime kiln. OK, and I remove the CO2. OK, I'm not really concerned with the CO2. OK, it's the calcium oxide here that I'm going to use. And calcium oxide is another word for lime, C-A-O. And I'm going to add in my second raw material here. And my second raw material is simply water. OK, so I have my calcium oxide. I add in water and I end up with slaked lime or calcium hydroxide and this all happens in a stirred tank so basically I add in my water and my water and my calcium oxide are stirred in a huge tank to make my calcium hydroxide again it is this calcium hydroxide that I am concerned with okay and that is otherwise called slaked lime OK, and here then I add in my third and my final raw material, and that is purified seawater. OK, and that purified seawater provides me with the source of magnesium chloride MgCl2. So what happens here is oh, I add in my MgCl2. I add it to my calcium hydroxide and I end up then with magnesium hydroxide and CaCl2. Again, this occurs in a stirred tank. So I simply, again, stir my magnesium chloride in with my calcium hydroxide and I end up with magnesium hydroxide. As you can see, we're not a million miles away from magnesium oxide, which is MgO. Okay, so we're quite close. Again, not concerned there with the CaCl2. Okay, so don't really need anything with that. So again, it is this magnesium hydroxide that I am concerned with. OK, and I simply put that into a settling tank. OK, and as the name would suggest, I put it in a tank and I just leave it to settle, much like what would happen when I talk about water. OK, and what happens is that the MgOH2 uh, splits into the MgO and then water floats to the top. So my MgO, my solid material, settles to the bottom. And what I do then is I put that into a furnace and I boil off my H2O. Okay, and that leaves me with my product there of MgO. Okay, um, in order then to make them into my briquettes, okay, so I now have my magnesium oxide. And to make them into my briquettes, I put them into a briquetting machine. And that machine operates at a temperature of 2300 degrees Celsius, so a huge boy, uh, melting point here. And what that produces then is high density magnesium pellets. And that's exactly what I am looking to make, okay? My magnesium oxide pellets, okay? And they're then used as our refractory bits. Now, what you need to know, you need to know the raw materials, 
okay so limestone you need to know water and you need to know purified water of mgcl2 and you do need to know each of the equations so calcium carbonate breaks into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide that calcium oxide is then mixed with water to form calcium hydroxide that is then mixed with magnesium chloride to form magnesium hydroxide. That magnesium hydroxide then is left to settle to form magnesium oxide with water being uh, boiled off. Okay, and then it's placed into my briquetting machine at 2300 degrees to make my, um, my pellets. Now, what you can often then be asked is how are my raw materials treated? And um, all quite similar here, limestone, firstly, you have to crush it to make it into small particles. It has to be washed. And then we've looked at it having to add water to make it a slate. So that would be how your limestone is treated. Second raw material is fresh water. So how is that treated? Firstly, it's acidified. So it's pH is lowered and it's degassed, which means its CO2 is removed. Finally, here then, your third raw material is seawater. Again, it's acidified. Again, it's degassed. And then thirdly, it is clarified, which means you allow the solids to settle at the bottom. The next thing then is why did it set up in Drogheda? Okay, so why in per Premier Pericles in Drogheda? Firstly, um, there's a limestone quarry that's in Drogheda, so that gives them access to limestone, which is my raw material. There's also seawater in the Boyne Estuary, so that gives me again my second raw material, and it also gives me fresh water. The rate. So when we're making our batch of our magnesium oxide, the first reaction, the production of lime is very slow. OK, so this reaction here, OK, the actual making of the lime is very slow, the calcium oxide oh, itself. Wow. However, once the, um, the lime has been made, the other reactions are quite quick. OK, the product yield is relatively low, so you need a, a large number of uh, quantity of seawater required because for every one litre of seawater, we only end up with two grams of magnesium oxide. So very, very, very small. In this, we've no products or sorry, no co-products. OK, um, there's no co-product produced along with the main product of magnesium oxide itself. So how then do they look after their waste disposal and effluent control? Firstly, they monitor their dust emissions and they put in electrostatic precipitators or filters. And basically they are put in their chimney stacks and they work really off static electricity. So the way I would explain it is that it'd be quite uh, similar to um, the static electricity that would build up on a television. And if you don't wipe the screen of that television, the dust will actually accumulate on it. So very similar there to what would happen in these chimney stacks the next point then is that obviously the waste seawater that we've used okay um needs to be treated and it needs to reduce the ph because obviously uh, calcium hydroxide calcium oxides they're all a basic substance OK, and you'd also have to monitor the amount of suspended solids okay um so there are two things that need to be um, to be considered when we're talking about waste disposal and effluent control. Um, so how do they carry out quality control? And there's pretty much two. OK, the first thing they do is an acid based titration because that will tell them obviously how pure, or how good their lime is. OK, and secondly, X-ray analysis, and that's of the reactants and products. OK, and that's carried out in all stages safety then you have to wear protective equipment so you're looking there at your clothing your helmets goggles earplugs okay all of those have to be worn when you're on site costs and the costs the reason why they even chose this site in Drogheda is that the uh, skeleton of the building had already been there from being an old cement factory okay so the setup costs were initially reduced from that they obviously have energy costs for operating all the kilns, um, for operating the furnaces, and then obviously your pumps. Um, 
the cost as well to take out or extract and then prepare or treat the raw materials, which we've looked at. And then you obviously have your general costs, your labor, your workforce, maintenance, keeping the machines working, um, and then administration, your likes of HR, accountants, whatever else you may need. <laughs> Location, so why was it picked here? Firstly, it's close to the limestone quarry, as we said, also near the Boyne Estuary, okay, so seawater. And because of that, that actually also makes it very easy to export the product, so easy distribution as well. It's also in Drogheda, close to Dublin, so there's an excellent road network, really deliverable throughout the whole country. And then plant construction materials, okay, so how was the plant itself build it? So built, so firstly, um, it's made up with steel inside, okay, because it needs to have obviously a very, very high um, uh, melting point. Um, the lime is stored in concrete silos, so basically really big holes in the ground made of concrete. Um, so the concrete reactor then is used uh, for a reaction between the seawater and the slate line, okay? Um, and even the refractory bricks that they make the magnesium oxide for are also present on the outside of these kilns and furnaces, again, made of stainless steel. That is the option, okay? Um, and the case study of magnesium oxide in Premier Pericles, Drogheda.